welcome to my French class. Bonjour et bienvenue à mon cours de français. In today's class, we're going to learn how to create sentences. So, so far, we learned how to pronounce combinations and letters, alphabets. We learned how to conjugate verbs using personal pronouns. We learned the past tense, the present tense, and the future tense. We learned about feminine versus masculine. Singular versus plural nouns. And then we learned how to conjugate adverbs, how to link adverbs to nouns, and how to use adverbs, which determiners to use in the sentence. And now we're going to learn how to combine everything together so that it sounds right. The first type of sentence in French is the simple declarative sentence. Very straightforward. You have a subject, you have a verb, and then you have an object. So very straightforward. An example. La professeure aime ses élèves. La professeure aime ses élèves. The teacher likes her students or the teacher loves her students. So very straightforward. You have a subject, the teacher. You have a verb, loves. And you have the object, the students. So in French, the subject is la professeur. The verb is M, L M, but you don't use L, you use la professeur. M, verb. Now object, what does the teacher love or like? Her students. So object is ses élèves. So straightforward declarative sentence. Next is negation. We briefly saw negation in the previous class, but we're going to see it in detail in here. So negation is subject, the word ne, verb, the word pas, and then object. So we also saw aucune in the previous class, which means none. But for now, we're just going to stick to the simple don't, do not, which is ne pas. So, example. Je ne veux pas aller au cinéma. I do not want to go to the cinema. So, je, subject, I. Ne, which negates my sentence. Ver, which is the verb vouloir. So, je ne veux. Vouloir is present tense. I do not want. Pas. What do I not want? To go to the cinema. So, je ne veux pas aller au cinéma. I do not want to go to the movies or to the cinema. So, again, straightforward. When you're using a negation negative sentence, you use ne, pas. So subject, ne, verb, pas. Straightforward. Subject, ne, verb, pas, and then object, because you have to say what you don't want. You have to specify what is it that you don't want. So that's the object at the end. So, so far so good. Interrogative sentence now. We saw these briefly as well in the last class with the Kells and the integration point, point d'interrogation, the question mark. So in this class, we're going to see it a bit in detail. So how do you ask a question? There's two types of approach, two types of sentence you can use in order to ask a question. So the first type is using est-ce que. By always slapping a est-ce que at the beginning of your sentence, it automatically asks a question. Est-ce que, est-ce que. Right? Just put Essica in the beginning of the sentence. That'll simplify your life. And for sure, everyone will know that you're asking a question because you're starting with Essica. So, an example. Est-ce que tu as fait tes devoirs? Have you done your homework? Est-ce que tu as fait tes devoirs? Have you done your homework? Est-ce que, have you done your homework? So, est-ce que. Question, est-ce que. I can't emphasize that enough. It's the easiest way to ask a question. Est-ce que? 
The second way is to reverse the verb and the subject. So normally is vous pourrez, let's say. So vous pourrez, I'm using vous because I'm being polite here. Could you, pourrez-vous now is a question. Pourrez-vous. Now I'm putting the verb first and then the subject. Could you, pourrez-vous, pourrez-vous, could you, show me the directions, pourrez-vous me montrer la direction? Pourrez-vous me dire où est la bibliothèque? So again, verb, subject, and then object. So instead of vous pouvez, you can, you can, vous pouvez, you reverse it, pouvez-vous, can you. Who can is you. So can you, can you, show me where the library is. Pourrez-vous me dire où est la bibliothèque? Those are the two types of interrogative sentences. Now, imperative sentences. Imperative sentences are very straightforward. They demand. So you don't necessarily put the personal pronouns in front, but it's to demand. So when you use the imperative sentence, which is the verb tense imperatif présent, what you do with that is you memorize it. And the tense imperatif présent will show you how to demand something. So as an example. Verb, object. You don't need to put the subject because you're giving an order. And by giving an order, you don't necessarily have to say who you're talking to. It's quite clear by just listening to the verb that you're conjugating and giving the order that we know who you're talking to. As an example, it'll help. Ouvrez la porte. Open the door. Ouvre la porte. If I'm using tu. Ouvre la porte. I don't need to say tu ouvre la porte, right? You open the door. No, open the door. Ouvre la porte, right? And how do I know it's tu? I'm talking to a kid or somebody younger than me. Ouvre la porte. Nicer way, but it's imperative. So I gotta, I gotta be a little bit demanding. So ouvre la porte, right? Ouvrez la porte, if I want to be polite. Ouvrez la porte. Monsieur, madame, s'il vous plaît, ouvrez la porte. So you don't have to say the subject, quite clear. You. Verb tense, imperative, imperative, which is basically giving a demand. You use the present tense, but you don't use the subject. So, ouvre la porte, ouvrez la porte, ouvrons la porte. That's for us. Open the door, ouvrons la porte. Let's open the door, yeah? Ouvrons la porte. So again, imperative sentence, verb, and object. Very straightforward. You can put an exclamation point because we're talking about a sentiment, remember when you have a strong sentiment, exclamation point. So simple declarative with an adjective. Simple declarative with an adjective, again, straightforward. You have the subject, you have the verb, you have the adjective, and the adjective must agree with the subject. So you have a subject, a verb, adjective, and the adjective must agree with the subject. So again, declarative, but by adding an adjective. La fille est belle. The girl is pretty. La fille est belle. Subject, the girl, is verb, verb, et, belle, adjective. Who is pretty? It's the girl. How is the girl? She's pretty. La fille est belle. Masculine now. Le chien est beau. So we saw that in the previous class. You have to link the adjective to who you're talking about. So, le chien, le chien is the dog. The dog is masculine. Because I'm not saying la chienne. Le chien. Le chien est beau. I use beau. I don't use belle because le chien is a masculine entity. And therefore, the adjective will also reflect as a masculine linked adjective. So, le chien est beau. The dog is pretty. Or the dog is beautiful. But we have a beau. Beautiful is for male. You don't call... A uh, guy, belle. So you say beau. So adverbal pronoun. Adverbal pronoun are specifically in French, not so much in English, but we use why by stating something. So subject, why, verb. As an example, on y va. On y va. Let's go. 
on is the subject, so who's who's going, it's on. Va is going. So instead of saying let's go, on va, it's on y va. On y va. So that's adverbal pronoun. I'll give you a bit more examples later on, but it's it, this is more used in French than it is in English, so good to know. Relative clauses. Relative clauses use que for the object and qui for a person. So que for the object, qui for a person. The equivalent of que would be that in English, and the equivalent of qui would be who in English. So, example. Le livre que tu m'as donné. Le livre que tu m'as donné. The book that you gave me. It's a relative clause. The book that you gave me. Le livre que tu m'as donné. So, that you gave me, que tu m'as donné. By putting a que, we also saw that briefly in the previous classes, but by putting a que, it basically means that you did something or that something has happened after. And qui. L'homme qui chante. The man who sings. L'homme qui chante. The man who sings. So, again, another example where we use qui for the person to refer to a human being. So what we just saw was an overview of the type of sentences that you can possibly have. And now, in the most common way, of course, I'm not talking about Shakespeare here or very, you know, high level written liter literature. I'm just talking about your typical sentences that you will commonly use. So now let's go into details for each and one of these. So, so the simple declarative sentence, it's a very straightforward type of sentence. It's the most commonly used in French. So it is to state a fact. Subject, verb, object, or subject, verb, adjective, but it's to state a fact. Il fait beau. So this was, again, don't forget, the subject, verb, object. Il fait beau. The weather is nice. Il fait beau. You can say it is nice, but il fait beau is an expression in French that means il fait beau, it's nice outside. So we can say in this case, the weather is nice. Il fait beau. The weather subject is verb, nice, adjective, or object. Catherine est une adolescente. So Catherine is a teenager. Catherine est une adolescente. So you have the subject, you have the verb, and you have an object. J'ai faim, I'm hungry. So subject, hungry. J'ai faim, another straightforward sentence. So my mom is a dancer. Ma mère est danseuse. Ma mère est chanteuse. My mom is a singer. So my mother, subject, is verb, stating a fact. She's a singer. She's a dancer. Il écoute la musique. He listens to music. So, il, subject, écoute the verb. Music is the object, but a stated fact. What is he doing? He's listening to music. Straightforward, common in English and in French. So now let's expand. If you can take the subject, verb, direct object, and then add a indirect object, Com this complifies a little bit more your simple, straightforward subject, verb, object, but it is also pretty common. So subject, verb, object, and then indirect. So how do you expand by adding indirect? You add a, so for, to, with whom is doing it. So that would be indirect object that you're adding to the sentence. So an example of subject, verb, direct object, and in indirect object would be, Marie donne le livre à sa professeur. Marie donne le livre à sa professeur. Mary gives her book to her teacher. So, Marie is the subject. Gives is the verb. Book is the object. But to whom is she giving the book? It's to the teacher. So, that's the indirect object. So, Marie donne le livre à sa professeur. Suzanne apporte les pommes à la cuisine. Suzanne apporte les pommes à la cuisine. So Susan brings the apples to the kitchen. Susan, the subject, brings, apporte, verb, les pommes, object, the apples, to the kitchen, indirect object, à la cuisine. So again, you have a subject, verb, object, and indirect object. Susan apporte les pommes à la cuisine. Lucie retourne les livres à la bibliothèque. Lucy returns the book to the library. 
So Lucie retourne le livre à la bibliothèque. Lucie is the subject. Retourne is the present tense of returning. Your verb. Livre is the object. And bibliothèque is the indirect object. So she's re bringing, she's returning the books where? To the library. So that's your indirect object there. This is a sentence, one level higher than your direct. Susan brings the book back. Where does she bring it back? To the library. We're just emphasizing one more by adding the location, specific, the specific location. Rémi mange son dîner à la table. So Rémi mange son dîner à la table. Rémi eats his dinner at the table. So Rémi mange son dîner à la table. Rémi is the subject. Mange is the verb, the present tense. Where? À la table, but what? Object is the dinner. So again, you have a condensed sentence that has everything. Object, direct object, and indirect object. So we've also seen compound words, words that you use together. We've seen in the previous classes compound verbs. So that's when you use an auxiliary, to do, to have, to be. In French, it's mostly être and avoir, but avoir is used more often than être is. So être is to be, avoir is to have. So we've seen examples of auxiliary compound verbs. So in the compound verbs, the verb that's explaining what's happening is in second place. So again, when you have a compounded verb, when you use an auxiliary, the second verb is what describes what's actually happening. So an example. Le roi avait pardonné le mousquetaire. Le roi avait pardonné le mousquetaire. So the king has pardoned the musketeer. So what did? That's has pardoned. So to have. But it's not about having. It's about pardoning. So what did the king do? He pardoned the musketeer. Il a pardonné. Le roi a pardonné. Le mousquetaire. So again, compound verb tense, but the second verb says exactly what the king is doing, what the person or the subject is doing. J'ai fini la vaisselle. I finished the dishes. J'ai fini la vaisselle. So j'ai, I have, finished, fini, la vaisselle, the dishes. So again, compound verb by using the auxiliary, I have finished, the dishes. So finished is the verb that explains what I've done. So I have finished the dishes. Les parents ont gâté ses enfants. The parents have spoiled the children. The parents have spoiled those children. Les parents ont gâté ses enfants. So les parents is the subject. Ont gâté is the verb. Ses enfants is the object. So ont gâté, again, is avoir and the verb gâté. What did the parents do? They spoiled. So the second verb is what describes again in the compound verb by using an auxiliary what the person or the subject is doing. Le professeur avait donné des devoirs. The teacher has given homework. The teacher has given homework. Le professeur a donné des devoirs. So le professeur is a subject. A donné. Again, auxiliary has Given, donné is the verb given, which is exactly what the teacher is doing. Des devoirs, les devoirs, le devoir. It depends if it's many, if it's just one homework or many homework. Then you use the object at the end of the sentences, which is linked to the second verb of what they're doing. Mon ami est arrivé hier soir. My friend arrived yesterday evening. Mon ami est arrivé hier soir. My friend has arrived yesterday evening. So mon ami, my subject, est arrivé, et is the verb être, to be, est arrivé hier soir. So est arrivé is the subject, the compound subject of to be with arrived, and then yesterday, hier soir, which is the timing of when that person has arrived. So the only time a direct object shows up after a indirect object is when there's additional information 
and it's a relative clause. So as an example, Ma sœur montre à ma mère les dessins que j'avais peints. Ma sœur montre à ma mère les dessins que j'avais peints. My sister shows my mother the drawings that I've painted. My sister shows to my mother the drawings that I painted. So you have the que and you have that. An English version of que. So relative clause, that's where the indirect object will show up before the direct object. Mon collègue dit à notre patron que je suis fainéante. Mon collègue dit à notre patron que je suis fainéante. My colleague says to our boss that I am lazy. So again, it's an example. I'm not lazy. It's an example. That's where the indirect object shows up before the direct object. Again, when it's a relative clause, que, qui, that and who. That and who for the English version. So another example. Benoit lit à sa copine les poèmes qu'il trouve romantiques. Benoit reads to his girlfriend the poems he finds romantic. So again, indirect object before the direct object, the poems that he finds romantic, he reads them to his girlfriend. So Reading to his girlfriend comes first, and then reading what? The poems. So, direct object comes out after. Gabriel donne à sa sœur les bonbons qu'il avait promis. Gabriel gives to his sister the candies he had promised. So, Gabriel donne à sa sœur, Gabriel gives to his sister les bonbons qu'il a promis. So, Gabriel, subject, give, verb, to his sister, object, what? the candies that he has promised. So you can structure the sentence where the direct object shows up before the indirect object. However, by doing that, it's not necessarily the correct version of writing the sentence. Why? Because it's ambiguous. Gabriel a donné les bonbons qu'il avait promis à sa sœur. So that would be the case where you would put the direct object before the indirect object. Gabriel a donné les bonbons qu'il a promis à sa sœur. So Gabriel gave the candies he had promised to his sister. So why is this sentence incorrect? I do understand what you mean by that, but why is this sentence incorrect? Because we don't know to whom Gabriel gave the candies to. Did he give, him, did he give it to his sister like he had promised? Or did he promise to give them or did he promise to his sister to give them to somebody, right? So, Gabriel a donné les bonbons qu'il avait promis à sa sœur. Again, I'm not too sure what's happening. I know what he did, but I don't know to whom he did it to, or to whom he gave it to. So, again, this is an example of where you can use a direct object before the indirect object, but by doing that, you're kind of messing up the structure of the sentence and now we don't know to whom you gave the candies to or Gabriel gave the candies to. So the right way of saying this is Gabriel donne à sa sœur les bonbons qu'il avait promis. Past tense. Gabriel donne à sa sœur les bonbons qu'il avait promis. Gabriel gives to his sister the candies he has promised. So now we know exactly who he gave it to. But again, if you put the direct object before the indirect object, Gabriel a donné les bonbons qu'il avait promis à sa sœur. Gabriel gave the candies that he had promised to his sister. So maybe he gave it to somebody else. He didn't give it to his sister. So a little trick there. That's why try to be more specific when you use the correct way of saying things because you want to, you know, you want the other person to understand you and, and not be ambiguous to, oh, who did you give the candies to? I'm not, I don't think I understand. Right? French is a very, very precise language. As you can see, we have many past tenses, many future tenses. We know exactly what you're talking about when you talk about something. So that's why it's important to, strict to, to stick to the structure that's correct. But again, you can, you know, mismatch the indirect object with the direct object, you know, and change its location. You'll still be speaking French. It'll just not be the 100% correct way. So word order with pronouns. French words are put into a different order if some or all of the words are pronouns. So let's take a sentence. 
Marie montre son dessin à sa mère. Marie montre son dessin à sa mère. Marie montre son dessin à sa mère. Mary shows her drawings to her mother. The subject pronoun stays in the beginning of the sentence. So Mary. Elle montre son dessin à sa mère. She shows her drawings to her mother. Sometimes in French, it's just more convenient to use the subject as a pronoun. So as an example, she shows her drawings to her mother. How can we make that sentence less cumbersome? In French, there's multiple ways. Elle lui montre son dessin. Lui replaces mother, although lui generally refers to a male. So, elle lui montre son dessin. We're replacing mom with lui. Elle lui montre son dessin. She shows her, her drawing, but elle lui montre son dessin. And lui, like I said, normally it's for male, but in this case, you will use it for the mother that you're referring to. Elle le montre à sa maman. Or, elle le montre à sa mère. Maman is mom, mère is mother. So, elle le montre à sa mère. So, you're replacing dessin with le. So, the drawings with le. Elle le montre. Elle le montre. You don't have to say drawings again, because by saying le, we're talking about the drawings. And now you combine both. Elle le lui montre. So, le dessin is masculine, and that's why you would say le and not la. So, elle le lui montre. Elle le lui montre would be, she's showing the pictures or the drawings to her mother. Elle lui montre. Elle is the subject. Lui is to whom you're showing. And le is what you're showing. So, very short, shorter sentence, but it's general. If you don't know what this person is talking about, if you don't know it's the, about the drawings and you don't know it's to the mother, you won't be able to use that sentence. But let's say I'm talking about my mother and I'm talking about the drawings and I keep talking about back and forth about my mother and the drawings that I'm showing to her, I can just say, elle lui montre, je lui montre, and it's straightforward. It's je showing, she showing, she it's showing, you know. You can't say she it's showing. You know, but in French, it's pretty much that concept. Elle lui montre, elle le montre. Elle me le montre, she's showing me. The first person singular, me, ranks before le. So, me always shows up before it. Object pronouns come before the verb, but after the subject. So, object pronouns show up before the verb, but after the subject. So subject me, te, se, nous, vous. So me, te, se, nous, vous. Then you have le, la, les, lui and leur. Then you have adverbal pronoun i and en. So example, elle nous les montre. Elle nous les montre. She shows them to us. So third part singular, the montre agrees with elle. So elle montre. Elle nous les montre. Elle nous les montre. She's showing us the drawings. Le is the drawings. Montre is showing. And nous is us. She us drawing shows. That's the direct translation, but that doesn't make sense in English. But I'm, I'm letting you know so that you understand exactly how I'm, I'm structuring the sentence. So, elle nous les montre. Est-ce qu'elle vous les montre? That's a question. Est-ce qu'elle vous les montre? Does she show them to you? So, them would replace the drawing. Does she show them to you? Est-ce qu'elle vous les montre? So, en is indefinite. Plural pronoun. So, in the sentence case, we'll represent the drawings. So, en is always placed before the verb. So, the way it would, we would use that is, elle montre des dessins à sa mère. Elle lui en montre. Elle montre des dessins à sa mère. She shows the drawings to her mother. Elle lui en montre. She shows her them. But just know that you can replace the mother with lui or the person to whom you're showing to, to lui. The object, what you're showing, you can replace it with le or en if it's some. 
Now, negative sentence. Again, negative sentences are straightforward. It's by using ne and pa. So ne comes immediately after the subject, and then pa comes right after the verb. So Marie ne montre pas ses dessins à sa mère. Marie ne montre pas ses dessins à sa mère. So Mary does not, ne montre pas, show the drawings to her mother. So ne montre pas is negation of show. So don't show versus show. Ne montre pas versus montre. So again, Marie ne montre pas ses dessins à sa mère. Mary does not show her drawings to her mother. Marie ne le montre pas. So Mary does not show show it to her mother. Marie ne le montre pas. Marie ne le montre pas à sa mère. Her ne le is replacing the drawings. Marie ne le montre pas à sa mère. Then Marie ne lui montre pas son dessin. Mary does not show the drawings to her mother, but we're switching mother with lui. And then Marie ne le lui montre pas. Mary does not show. So basically, Mary isn't showing the drawings to her mother, but we're simplifying it by saying Marie ne le lui montre pas. Mary does not show it to her. So no and not any is ne aucun. So no and not any is ne and aucun in French. Marie ne montre aucun dessin à sa mère. Mary shows no pictures to her mom or Mary doesn't show any pictures to her mom. So those would be the two ways of explaining that. Sorry if you're hearing the cat outside, he's hungry. So adverbs and adverbal phrases. So adverbal phrase or complément circonstanciel, like you would say in French, can come at the beginning, the end, or the middle of the sentence. They are emphasized if they're put at the beginning or at the end. And more colloquial to only put single word adverbs in the middle. So as an example, Marie lui montrera son dessin demain. So Marie is going to show the picture in the future. So Marie lui montrera son dessin demain. Mary will show him or her her drawings tomorrow. Now you can put demain in the beginning of the sentence. So demain. Marie lui montrera son dessin. So tomorrow, Mary will show him or her her drawing. So you can put demain, tomorrow, in the beginning or at the end of the sentence. Now for the middle of the sentence, it would be Marie lui montrera demain son dessin. Marie lui montrera demain son dessin. So Marie, the subject, lui montrera. Lui is to her mother. Montrera is to show. Demain, tomorrow. Son dessin, the object, which is the painting, the drawings. Or you can use a place. So instead of a time such as tomorrow, yesterday, you can use a place. So as an example, Marie lui montrera son dessin à l'école. Marie lui montrera son dessin à l'école. Marie lui montrera son dessin à l'école. So Mary will show her drawing. At the school. Or you can put it in the beginning of the sentence. À l'école, Marie lui montrera son dessin. So at school, Mary will show her or him her drawings. E, the adverbial pronoun E, directional, comes after most other pronouns, but before the plural pronoun un. It is generally used to denote a progressive action or one that is about to take place. However, E can only be used if the listener knows what the speaker is talking about. So, Marie va à l'école. Marie va à l'école. Marie goes to school. If the listener knows where Marie is headed, the speaker can say Marie y va. Mary is going. But you have to know where Mary is going in order to use E. Another example, nous irons au bois. We go to the woods. Now, you can say in a much simpler way, nous y allons. Nous y allons. So we're going. So, but we have to know where we're going. To the woods. Now adjectives and their placement in the sentence. Some adjectives are placed before the noun. Some adjectives are placed after the noun. So let's see how this works. As an example, the English person would say a red balloon. In French is le ballon rouge. So the balloon red. A little different here. So the hungry lion, le lion affamé. So, the hungry lion, le lion affamé. In this case, the adjective comes after the noun. 
sont Ballon Rouge, Lion Affamé, The Sleepy Child, L'Enfant Somnolent. So, L'Enfant Somnolent, adjective comes after the subject. The, the Playful Cat, Le Chat Ludique. So, The Playful Cat, Le Chat Ludique. So, Ludique comes after Chat. A Good Book, or Bon Livre. So in this case, bon comes before livre. So this is an example where the adjective comes before the noun. Okay, so constructions where the adjective comes before the noun. When it talks about beauty, age, goodness, and size. So beauty, age, goodness, and size. These are situations where the adjective comes before the noun. So as an example, beauty, un joli ballon, a pretty balloon. Un joli ballon. Une jolie femme, a pretty lady. Une belle chanson, a pretty song. Age, un vieux ballon, an old balloon. Un vieil homme, an old man. Une vieille femme, old woman. So vieux is the masculine of vieille. But you don't say vieux plus voil, a, a word that starts with a vowel or an H. If it starts with a vowel on H and it's masculine, you say vieille, but V-I-E-L versus V-I-E-L-L-E, -E, which is the feminine version. Une vieille bicyclette, an old bicycle, another example, where the adverb comes before the noun. So goodness, category goodness, or méchant ballon, a mean balloon. Or bon vin, a good wine. Une bonne amie, a good friend. So size, or grand ballon, a big balloon. Or petit ballon, a small balloon. Une petite fille, a small girl. So if it's expressing a state, the state comes after the verb. So if it's stating a state, the state will come after the verb. Le ballon est vert. The balloon is green. Le ballon semble petit. The balloon seems small. Le ballon deviendra grand. The balloon will become bigger. So state comes after the verb. And don't forget the adjective always has to agree with the noun in both gender and number. So la chatte deviendra grande. So la chatte deviendra grande. So grand becomes grande. La fille semble petite. La fille semble petite. So petite, small, is linked to la fille, which is feminine, singular. La voiture est verte. So what is green? It's the car. The car is feminine, so green is also feminine. Verte versus vert. Now, relative clause is introduced by a relative pronoun que. The English version is that. If the noun is an object, is que, and qui if the noun is a human. So these clauses are usually placed at the end of the sentence and come right after the noun that they are qualifying. So meaning these nouns are sometimes moved from their usual place in the sentence. So an exception to this, if the qualifying noun is the subject, then the relative clause is moved forward. And if, if it's very long, you can put it between two commas. An example, j'aime la chanson que tu chantes. I like the song that you're singing. La chanson que tu chantes est belle. So the first example, que tu chantes is at the end of the sentence. La chanson que tu chantes est belle. The song that you're singing is pretty, would be the translation. Marie donne à Daniel le livre qu'elle a acheté. Mary gives to Daniel the book that she bought. Marie qui aime la danse donne le livre à Daniel. Mary who likes the dance gives the book to Daniel. So an example of where it would be in the middle of the sentence and separated by two commas because the sentence is a bit longer than your average sentence. Next is conjunctive clauses. Conjunctive phrases are clauses that are the subject of the verb. Conjunctive phrases are clauses that are the object of the verb. The verb in question de generally deals with thoughts or emotions and the expression of them. They are either infinitive clause or are introduced with the conjunction que. J'ai décidé de prendre le train. I decided to take the train. Elle aide William à apprendre le français. She helps William to learn French. Il pense que je t'aime. He thinks that I love you. Tu dis que tu veux mon amitié. You say that you want my friendship. So don't forget, a conjunction clause comes after an expression. So je comprends que, 
Je pense que, I think that, I understand that, it's behavioral. So the French integration sentence. We briefly saw that in the summary in the beginning of the video, but we're going to go into details now and we'll give you a little examples. So putting a ce que at the beginning of every sentence turns it into a question. So very straightforward. Est-ce que vous pouvez m'aider? Can you help me? Est-ce que vous savez où se trouvent les toilettes? Can you point me to the bathrooms? Do you know where the bathrooms are? Est-ce que vous savez où se trouvent les toilettes? Do you know where the bathrooms are? Est-ce que l'éléphant est le plus grand mammifère terrestre? Is the elephant the biggest land-bound mammal? Is the elephant the biggest land-bound mammal? Est-ce que ce siège est pris? Is this seat taken? So, est-ce que, est-ce que, est-ce que, I can't emphasize it enough. Slap an est-ce que in the beginning of a sentence. We know exactly that you mean a question. And of course, you put an interrogation point at the end, a question mark at the end uh, to make it grammatically correct. Now, reversing the subject in the verb. This one's a little bit more eloquent because you're not just saying, can you, can you, you know, it's more, can you? Pouvez-vous? So, pouvez-vous, instead of vous pouvez, so, vous pouvez, pouvez-vous, you put the verb before the, sen the subject, and then it becomes a question. So, pouvez-vous m'aider? Can you help me? Savez-vous où se trouvent les toilettes? Savez-vous? Do you know where the bathrooms are? Savez-vous? So, again, reverse. So, if the subject is not the person you're addressing, then it stays at the beginning of the sentence. You don't move it. You can add il in, the, in this case. So, l'éléphant est-il le plus grand? Mammifère terrestre. The elephant, is it the biggest land-bound mammal? Ce siège, est-il pris? The seat, is it taken? So you leave the subject in the beginning, you don't move it, and you add est-il instead of est-ce ce siège pris? You can also say est-ce ce siège pris, but that's not correct. The correct way would be, est-ce que, or, ce siège est-il pris? So for questions that can be answered with a yes or no. So you can say, avez-vous l'heure? Or, vous avez l'heure? So you can also say, vous avez l'heure? Integration point, question mark. But the correct version would be, avez-vous l'heure? So again, if the subject, if the answer is not yes or no, you can write it like that as well. So here's a list of French words when you're asking questions. Qui is who? Qui? Who? Qui es-tu? Who are you? Que is what? Que fais-tu? What are you doing? Quoi? Would, in the rare case, would replace que. But you, it's what? Quoi faire? What to do? Quoi faire? So both que and quoi is what? But you mostly use que, and in rare occasions, you can replace the que with quoi. So what to do, quoi faire. This will come with practice because it's memorization. Où is where. So don't forget, OU is or, but OU with a backward slash is where. Comment is how. Comment vas-tu? How are you? Où, où vas-tu? Where are you going? Pourquoi is why? So, pourquoi? Pourquoi manges-tu ces frites? Why are you eating those fries? Example. Combien would be how much? Cela coûte combien? How much does this cost? How much? Combien? And then you have the quel, 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 and quel. Masculine quel, feminine quel, masculine plural quel, feminine plural quel, and those we saw in the last class. So I'm not going to go over them, but those are the four kels that asks a question. Which, 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 which? Quel cinéma joue-t-il le nouveau film? Quel cinéma joue-t-il le nouveau film? Which cinema plays the new movie? So quel would be Q-U-E-L-S because we're talking about many cinemas and cinema is a masculine word. So many masculine words, masculine plural. So quel becomes masculine plural as well. Dans quel château Edmond Dante est-il emprisonné? Dans quel château? So, in which 
castle was Edmund Dante imprisoned? Which castle? Quel château? So château is masculine. It's singular. So you use quel masculine singular. Après quelle date peut-on manger? After which date can we eat? Let's say if you're doing Ramadan or, you know, you're fasting. After which date can we eat? Après quelle date peut-on manger? So, quel would be Q-U-E-L-L-E -E because that, une date is feminine and it's singular. So, quel date, you link it to the date, which is feminine singular. Now, indirect questions. So, these are questions that are related rather than asked. Il se demande quel cinéma montre le nouveau film. Il se demande quel cinéma montre le nouveau film. He's wondering which movie, which cinema plays the new movie. He's wondering which cinema plays the new movie. Il se demande quel cinéma joue le nouveau film. So this would be an indirect question. It's not direct, but the person is asking a question indirectly. Elle demande comment il va. She wonders how he's going. Elle demande comment il va. She wonders how he's going. So again, she wonders. It's a question, but it's not direct. It's indirect. Now, the French conditional sentence, we have si and alors, which basically means if, then, or if, so. So in French, that is si and alors. Sometimes you can leave the alors out when you're more advanced. So if you don't see the alors there, don't be triggered. Don't worry. It's okay. But most common use terms are si and alors together. So as an example, si tu veux apprendre la langue, alors il faut étudier. If you want to learn the language, then we must study. Si tu veux apprendre la langue, alors il faut étudier. So, si et alors. Si tu ne m'aimes pas, je t'aime. Et si je t'aime, prends garde à toi. This is a sentence where you would use if and if. If I do this for you, then you do this for me, let's say. And that wraps up everything. So these are every single type of sentence you would see commonly in French. Try to learn them all, try to practice. And again, you now have the base on how to construct a sentence, depending if you ask a question, if you want to give an order, um, you know, if, if, if you want to add a compliment or a adjective to the sentence, or if you just want it to be straightforward. Now you can look at the structure of the sentence and fill it in. So, as an example, if you want to take the declarative sentence or a straightforward sentence, subject, verb, object, je m'appelle Sarah. I'm called Sarah. So, je, because I'm talking about me, so I. Then you conjugate the verb, present tense of call. Je m'appelle, because I'm, I'm called. It's not I call, it's I'm called. So, je m'appelle Sarah. I'm called Sarah. Right? So now you know how to conjugate verbs. You know which pronoun to use. You know how to use a adjective with your noun and link it when it comes to numbers and the gender. And now you know how to place your object, indirect object or in your direct object within the sentence and where to put it within the sentence. So it's very straightforward. I'm showing it to you like a mathematical formula but it's crucial to practice. I can't emphasize enough that you can memorize all this, but if you don't practice, you're simply not gonna learn the language. So again, practice makes perfect, but you have all the tools now to create a complete sentence. Next class, we're gonna learn about numbers because we didn't do that yet. Once we learn numbers, we're gonna go over some images of most commonly used words like face, hands, and then, you know, most we already did the verbs, but most commonly used uh, words as in location. If you go to a restaurant, how to order, I'll go through that. And then once you go through that, everything else is just a question of Googling. Oh, how, how do I say this word so I can plug it into my sentence? So you know how to create a sentence. You know how to make a type of sentence. You know how to conjugate your verb. And again, you know how to plug in adjectives for it to match with the feminine and masculine and singular plural. So you have everything you need to create a sentence and to speak French and communicate with someone else. So again, next class, we're going to go over numbers. And the class after that, that is going to be image, totaling 12 classes. And again, three months time, take one class per week. Some classes are a bit more loaded. Other classes are less loaded. 
and then that should balance everything out for you to be able to understand and fluently speak French within three months. So again, practice, practice, practice. There's a lot of other videos, there's apps, there's you know cyber people you can talk to and then see how it's pronounced, how it's spelled and everything else you have internet. So you again, I gave you the basis on how to speak English and turning in that into French structure. Again, French is very, very complicated. I am not showing you the complicated version. I'm showing you the functional, how to speak French, get by, communicate, and have a great time with someone on the other side of the planet. So thanks again. I look forward to the next, next class. Numbers should be way easier than today's class. So watch the video a few times uh, and just see the different types of sentences and structure and how to structure them. So thank you. It's a little bit cold here in California. Please don't forget to vote if you live here in LA. It's very important. You're important. We all are important. Our future is important. So your participation is very important. And if you're in a different country or a different state, please vote when it's time to vote. It's our duty to help change this world and make it a better place for everybody in the present moment and for all the next generations to come. So thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next class.